Hello and welcome to episode 4 of our mini-sodes. This episode I'm going to be talking about the British-founded anti-Semitic anti-immigration group, the Britons. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I have a dream. One day, this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its dream. We hold these Jews to be self-evident that all men are created in the world will little note no longer remember what we say, but it can never forget what they did. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. The Britons was an English anti-Semitic and anti-immigration organisation that was founded in London in 1919 by Henry Hamilton Beamish the son of Rear Admiral Hamilton Beamish, who at one point served as a personal assistant to Queen Victoria. Henry Beamish served in the Second Boer War and settled in South Africa after. However, he left the country having decided that the Jews held too much influence there. Beamish wrote the Britain's Constitution and the group was launched at a meeting of 14 people chaired by John Henry Clarke, a prominent English classic homeopath who was described as the most important anti-Semite in Great Britain. The group held monthly meetings in London and launched its own publishing imprint, the Judaic Publishing Company Limited, which was to be the source of much anti-Semitic and conspiratorial literature. Beamish became involved with the Silver Badge Party, an unofficial political movement established following World War I, although by 1919 he left Britain altogether after losing a libel case brought forth Sir Alfred Mond and thereafter became a travelling salesman for anti-Semitism. Following his departure from Britain, Beamish travelled the world preaching anti-Semitism. He was one of the earliest developers of the Madagascar plan for Jewish deportation that was proposed by the Nazi party. He spoke in Germany a number of times where he claimed to have taught Adolf Hitler and helped influence his views on the Jews. During this time, Beamish served as vice president of the Imperial Fascist League, became a member of of the Nordic League and travelled to America, where he was actively working as a representative of the German government as a Nazi agent. Eventually, he settled in southern Rhodesia in 1938, where he served as an independent MP. Despite Beamish leaving Britain, the Britons continued under John Henry Clark, who served as chairman and vice president, with the southern Rhodesian-based Beamish continuing as president. Clark helped the party to work with the right wing of the Conservative Party, and the Britons attracted such members as Arthur Kitson and Brigadier General R.B.D. Blakeney. The group claimed that its only aim was to get rid of all the Jews in Britain by forcing them to emigrate to Palestine. Only those who could prove English blood up to grandparent level were allowed membership. Eschewing the street politics of predecessors such as the British Brothers League, group activities centred mainly on publishing, with journals such as Jury Uber Owls, The British Guardian and The Investigator, which was publishing in 1937 and used a swastika as its emblem with the motto For Crown and Country, Blood and Soil. These journals featured contributions from some of the most fanatical and notorious anti-Semites, including British Army officer and colonial administrator George Clark and Joseph Bannister as well as translations of work by Nazi race theorist Alfred Rosenberg. The group also published a number of anti-Semitic books on the topic, including a translation of The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, an anti-Semitic text purporting to describe a Jewish plan for global domination. Researcher Nick Tozek claims that for the sum of £30, the Britons purchased a set of printing plates and the publishing rights to The Jewish Peril. The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. The Britons continued to publish and sell the protocols for the rest of their existence, eventually producing 85 editions. Known from 1922 onwards as the Britons Publishing Company, this separate publishing arm produced material for such groups as the British Union of Fascists and other UK anti-Semitic and fascist organisations until it went out of business in 1975. Short of funding, the Britons drifted into inactivity after Clark's death and was then run by solicitor James D. Bell until 1949. It was largely inactive during World War II, although it was later revived first by Arthur Giddens and then by A.F.X. Barron. 
The group launched a new anti-Semitic far-right publication, Free Britain, which featured, which featured contributions from Arnold Lessie and Colin Jordan, but was largely defunct as a political group by the 1950s. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this episode. If you enjoyed it, you can find our social media online. Our Twitter handle is at eccentric underscore earth. Our Facebook is www.facebook.com forward slash eccentric earth. And we're on Instagram at eccentric earth. If you want to write in with any suggestions for future episodes or with any feedback, our email address is eccentric earth at outlook.com. You can find us on all major podcast providers and YouTube. So please make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And please leave us a review. Thank you for listening and we will see you next time. (laughs) 